Welcome viewers. Today we are going to make a test stand for our brushless motor. This test stand will be used to measure the thrust developed by the motor, the propeller RPM, the battery voltage, ESC current draw, as well as motor temperature and ESC temperatures. To build our motor test stand, we begin by taking a wooden board. This will form the base on which rest of the equipment will be mounted. Then we take a T-hinge and attach it to one end of the board. Some holes are drilled and T-hinge is attached to the board uh, with bolts and screws. Next we take a wooden wall bracket, a standard wall bracket that you can buy from your local hardware store to attach uh, some shelves to the wall and we uh, attach this wooden bracket to the other end of the T-hinge. So now this board forms a base about which this bracket can rotate. Then we start building our first Z bracket. Since I did not have a Z bracket at hand, I used two angle brackets to make a Z bracket. So the first Z bracket is complete. Then we take a load cell. Please note the direction in which this load cell measures the load to make uh, sure that the, the load, uh, the thrust of the motor is measured appropriately. Then we attach this Z bracket to this load cell. In the end, this assembly will form the other end of the uh, angle bracket and will uh, measure the thrust produced by the motor. Usually these uh, load cells have M4 screw holes built into them. Uh, and you can use an M4 screw to attach the bracket directly to the load cell. Whichever method you use, either an M4 or a smaller screw with a nut, make sure that the screws are tightened thoroughly as any slack in this assembly will produce an error in the measured uh, thrust. So the bracket is tightened. So the bracket is tightened. Just to check to see how it will fit under the angle bracket. Next we take two more angle brackets and build the second Z bracket that will be used to hold the other end of the load cell. Again, make sure the screws are tightened thoroughly. There's no slack. At this end will bear the load and will transfer the motor thrust to the load cell. So any slack here will result in a error in measurement. Second bracket is ready. Here we have attached the second bracket to the load cell as well. And now we are attaching this assembly to the angle bracket. Needless to say, make sure the screws are tight. No slack is there.
Now it's time to attach this assembly to the wooden board. So we drill the holes according to the angle bracket. And bolt it down with screws and bolts. Now you can see one end of the wooden angle bracket is held by a T hinge and the other end is uh, held by the load cell. So as the angle bracket tries to rotate due to force from the motor, it will be restricted from doing so by the load cell. And in return, load cell will measure this uh, uh, thrust. Next we begin by attaching electronics and sensors to our motor test stand. In my case I am using a Hobby King Red Brick 2 to 7 cell 100 ampere electronic speed controller. I am attaching it in a way that the uh, cooling fins are on the outside so they face the airflow and I am using tie wraps to attach the speed controller to the motor test stand. This way you can change the speed controller for a different type of motor or if the speed controller gets damaged. Here you get a good view, a side view of how the speed controller is attached to the stand. Trimming up the excess tie wraps. Next we take the voltage and current sensor uh, that I have uh, described in another video and we'll attach it in line with the speed controller. The current sensor is a ACS 758, uh, 100 ampere bidirectional current sensor. And voltage uh, sensor is simply a voltage divider. So now the two sensors and the speed controller are attached. Tidying up the installation by attaching some more tie wraps and trimming off the excess. Next, I'm going to attach a temperature sensor to measure the temperature of the speed controller. Usually, it's an important parameter to see if the speed controller is heating up due to the excessive current of the motor. In our case, we are using a pretty sturdy 100 ampere speed controller. So, uh, it's not uh, likely to burn up under normal circumstances. However, it's always good to see what is the temperature rise to prevent any accidental damage to the speed controller. So I again use some angle brackets to form a base on which the MLX90614 non-contact temperature sensor will be attached. The way this temperature sensor uh, is attached is that it's facing towards the fins of the speed controller. So now it will only measure the temperature of the speed controller. If you are enjoying this video, do like, subscribe and share our videos so we can bring more videos like this to you. Here you see the whole of the circuit built on a breadboard and powered up. All the sensors are right now connected. Just to check if everything is working okay. You can get the schematic of this circuit in the comment section below. We have another MLX90614 sensor which will be measuring the temperature of the motor and the square sensor that you see is TCRT 5000 um, optical reflective sensor. Now it's time to attach the motor. A 3D printed mount uh, appropriate for the motor is already attached and now we are attaching this uh, whole assembly to the uh, test stand. The white tapes on the propellers that you see is for the reflective optical sensor to measure the RPM of the propeller. This is also described in another video where I've shown you how to measure, uh, how to make a uh, RPM sensor.
screws are being tightened up. Uh, this is a 5010 uh, brushless motor which is fairly powerful and we don't want this motor flying off and causing some damage. Same is the case for any other motors too. I mean, I, I don't think anybody would want their motors flying off the test stand. So the propeller rotates freely and in close proximity to the uh, RPM sensor. Now it's time to calibrate the load cell. The software or the firmware of this board uh, takes two commands. One is the tear command and the other is the calibrate with the load command. So tear command will zero the sensor. Make sure that motor is uh, not operating and there's no load. So just type tear, no capitals. And the system will start measuring the values and zero this uh, reading according to the measured values. It will take a bunch of values and then average them and use them as a zero value. Here it's acquiring these multiple values. And now we can check on the OLED screen and here we see that our thrust measurement has zeroed now. Next step is to calibrate the load sensor so we can measure an accurate value of the thrust. For this we will apply a known load to the system and use it as a calibration value. So I'm using two ankle weights of 1000 grams each, so a total of 2000 grams. Here I'm verifying the value on a kitchen scale and it shows 1996 grams. So I'm going to use this value to calibrate my system. So the way calibration is going to be done is I'm going to enter command calibrate, that's no capitals, C-A-L-I-B-R-A-T-E, calibrate, space 1996. Once I enter this value, I will get uh, a interval of 10 seconds during which I have to apply this weight. And once I've applied this weight, the system will take it as a calibration value. So here I'm going to enter the command. command entered it will give me 10 seconds here we go systems entering calibration mode I will apply 2000 grams of weight make sure that it's fully applied and if properly done the system should take this as a calibration value and it will start showing on the screen the actual value measured which should be your calibration value if it doesn't work properly, you can repeat it as many times as you want. To verify that the calibration has been done correctly, now we can apply a different weight and see if the system uh, measures it correctly. For this, I will use four ankle weights, so a total of about 4,000 grams. So here I have connected the 4,000 grams of weight. The system's in tension, so all the load is fully applied. And we check on the screen and we see that the weight that's applied on the screen is 4000 grams which indicates that our calibration was successful in this picture you can see various components uh, which i have used on the breadboard now after final assembly and calibration it's time to test so I've connected a 5010 uh, brushless motor, which is uh, 340 kV rated. It can produce a maximum of 4 kilograms of thrust with 6 cell LiPo. However, I'm using a 4 cell LiPo here, so the thrust produced would be significantly less. However, I want to see the total uh, response of the system to make sure all the sensors are working correctly.
one thing that I noticed here is that our current sensor is fairly inaccurate. ACS 758 for some reason has a residual value which basically uh, corrupts your power calculation. The ACS 758 that I'm using is rated at plus minus 100 amperes and uh, with this motor setup I'm probably using only uh, one tenth of it with a plus uh, or 20 amperes of current. So maybe the residual uh, current measurement is, is too high and it always shows up even at zero current showing at 0 0.8 amperes which uh, with the 15 volts of battery power sometimes reaches to about 15 volts of power when the motor is not even in motion but uh, the trend it shows is correct so if we take the residual value out we can fairly accurately estimate the power produced and delivered to the system